Hello and welcome to another video. So I have a question here that talks about finding the values of m that would make this equation have two distinct uh, values of x, that is two distinct solutions. Well, usually when you get two distinct solutions when you solve an equation, you should know that you're dealing with a quadratic equation. Um, I know this has x squared and this has x squared also, but you know that if you divide this, this by this, it's going to eliminate one of the x's and then you're going to have x squared and then a term in x and maybe a constant or no constant. Um, but let's talk about quadratic equations generally. If you use the quadratic formula, you would observe that you always get two answers every time just because you have to do plus or minus and that's where the problem sets in or the distinction between the two answers that you get. Firstly, let's write the equation. So you have x will be equal to minus b, um, let's put it this way, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Wait, what makes you get two different answers is because you have plus, you're adding something at some point, and you're subtracting something at some point. So you always get two distinct answers, unless you're adding or subtracting zero. So you notice that the only case in which your answers will not be different is if what you're adding is zero. You're adding nothing and you're subtracting nothing. Okay, if you're adding nothing or subtracting nothing, it simply means this portion, okay, where you have the square root of b squared minus 4ac is zero. And that can only happen if we square both sides, you're gonna end up with b squared minus 4ac equals zero, or you have b squared is equal to 4ac. This is the key to the question that we have. So let's go back to the question. If this equation, which I can see is gonna be a quadratic, we're gonna take care of this later. If a quadratic equation has two distinct solutions, it means what you have here cannot be zero. And if what you have here is not zero, it means that b squared minus 4ac is not zero, and it also means b squared is not 4ac because if b squared is 4ac then you cannot get two distinct solutions you're going to get just one solution because this plus or minus will be plus or minus zero and your answer is just minus b over 2a so we can come to a conclusion that a quadratic equation will have two distinct solution if this does not happen so we can say that um, there are, okay, two distinct solutions, two solutions if b squared is not equal to 4ac. Okay, so you see the explanation. Now let's solve the problem. Okay, generally for a quadratic equation, this is how we write it. ax squared plus bx plus c, we know that a is the leading coefficient and b is the, um, is the coefficient of x and c is the constant. So we have to try to write this to look like this and then see what can be our b and what can be our c and what can be a. Okay, so let's start by simplifying this. This is a problem because this says absolute value of x. You see, it would be easier if we just wrote x because we can cancel out the x. But absolute value, remember by definition that, let's do something easy here, the absolute value of x, hey, absolute value of x is equal to x. Just as the absolute value of three is equal to three, right? So the absolute value of x is x and the absolute value of x could also be negative x okay how do we, that's why we do plus or minus 
What does this mean? It means the absolute value, just quick example, I'm gonna get rid of it. The absolute value of two is two. The absolute value of negative two is negative negative two. So there are cases where the absolute value of a number is just that number if that number is positive or zero. Or it is the negative of that number if the number is negative. So there are two options we're gonna get every time we take absolute value. So remember, the absolute value always comes out positive. So this has to come out positive. So this and this are the same because we put a negative because this number was a negative number. So by definition, we know that absolute value of x is equal to, look at this, is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. And it's negative x if x is less than zero. This is the definition of absolute value. And that, that's what I just explained here. And that's what I just showed here. So sometimes it is just that number. Sometimes it is the negative of that number because that number itself was originally negative. Okay, which is this. It is the number if the number is positive or zero. It is the number, is the negative of the number if, the, if x itself was already negative. Remember, absolute value is the distance you move away from zero. So it always has to give you a positive eventually. So let's apply that to this equation. So this absolute value could either be written this way or be written this way. So let's write this. So we have, we have this expression, we have x squared minus x squared over, we're gonna choose the positive version, over x equals mx. Or we're gonna choose the negative version, it's gonna be x squared minus x squared over negative x equals mx. So those are the two versions of this equation and then we're going to figure out when we have two solutions or when we have, oh that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a case where b squared is not equal to 4ac and then we're going to have two distinct solutions. So let's simplify this. We've got x squared. This will give us minus x. I'm going to bring this in now and it's going to be minus mx equals zero or we're going to get x squared. This will give us plus x, and this is minus mx equals zero. So let's write this as if it's a quadratic equation. As you can see, there is a x squared, and there's x, and there's x. So we can factor out and make it look quadratic. So what we have is x squared minus, if you factor out the x here, you're going to have um, one, and this is going to be plus x. Okay, and I'm going to just put a C there just so we can have something um, analogous to this. So it's gonna be C equals zero, or no, let's call it zero. There's nothing, there's no constant, so we just put zero. Or it's gonna be x squared um, plus, let's see, this is gonna be plus zero equals zero. So this is gonna be, if you factor out these two terms, it's gonna be one minus m. Okay, so you can see in either case, we have a quadratic equation. This is your a, this is your b, and this is your c. The same way you have a, you have b, and you have c. So if either of these two quadratic equations has two distinct solutions, this has to be true. Okay, so we're gonna say if there are two distinct, distinct solutions, then b squared is not equal to 4ac, which means b squared could be equal to 4ac only if there's one solution, okay? By the way, all quadratics will have solutions. Now, whether the solutions or what you call the roots are real or imaginary is a different question, okay? But they have, so we're not talking about whether they have real roots or no real roots, no. We're talking about whether they have one 
solution or two distinct solutions and this is the key to it b squared cannot be equal to 4ac to get two distinct solutions so now let's go here what's the b for this problem as you can see in this problem our b is negative 1 plus x so we're going to say that negative 1 plus x squared that's our b squared is not equal to 4 times a, what's our a? a in this case is 1, and what is c? c is 0. Or, we do the same thing here, what's the b for this one? It's going to be 1 minus m, all squared, is not equal to 4 times a, what is a? It's 1, and what is c? It's 0. Okay, so from here we can see the square of this actually will get rid of this negative sign. So you have 1 plus x squared is not equal to 0. Or we're going to say 1 minus m squared is not equal to 0. Now let's solve this. Take the square root of both sides. You have 1 plus x is not equal to 0. 1, not x. This is M, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, one plus M, we're looking for values of M. Okay, or one minus M, take the square root of both sides, is not equal to zero. And we can say clearly if one plus M is not equal to zero, then M is not equal to negative one or m is not equal to 1. And so we can say m is any value other than negative 1 or 1. And if you avoid these two numbers, you will get two distinct solutions. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like, a share, give it a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.